In this video, we're going to talk about how to configure SSL or TLS decryption on the Palo Alto firewall. Now, SSL and TLS encryption is one of those, or decryption is one of those things that they told you can't be done. But it turns out that actually you can. It's there by design. You just have to be the right person at the right place in order to do it properly. Let's go ahead and see an example of how this might work in the real world. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up Internet Explorer here, and I'm just going to go to Facebook.com. Now, when we go to Facebook.com, not only do we see that it is HTTPS, but we also have this uh, lock icon right here that gives us more information about what's going on. When I click on the lock icon, we can say view certificates, and it gives us more information about the certificate that is used to encrypt this, this, this stream. Here we can see that this is issued to Facebook.com, and it was issued by a company called DigiCert. Now my computer over here has been configured to trust DigiCert. DigiCert has said, hey, Facebook.com is a legitimate site. You can trust them. Since I trust DigiCert and DigiCert says I could trust Facebook, I go ahead and I automatically trust Facebook.com. Pretty much how it works. Now, there's a whole lot more details as far as um, how, how all this ties together, but that's pretty much the crux of everything that needs to be in there. So if we look at our network diagram, there we go. Uh, what was happening was we have our facebook.com out here. And then up here is DigiCert. When my client went out to facebook.com, it said, hey, I want to communicate with you. Facebook.com then sent back some communications using its certificate. My server went up to DigiCert and said, hey, is this a valid certificate? Once it was confirmed that yes, it is a valid certificate, the information in the certificate is then used to establish the encrypted communication. Now the Palo Alto can actually replace a lot of this so that when I talk through the Palo Alto and say I want to talk to Facebook, it talks to Facebook on my behalf. Facebook then sends back its certificate and the Palo Alto goes up against DigiCert to see if it is in fact a trusted certificate. If it is, then the Palo Alto can create a new certificate using from the Palo Alto to me and then establish an encrypted communication internally while there's still an encrypted communication externally. So previously there was only the one encrypted communication between my server and Palo Alto, but now there's two one between my server and the Palo Alto, and the other one between the Palo Alto and Facebook. I think I misspoke. Previously, one between my server and Facebook, not Palo Alto. If that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, don't worry. Uh, there's a whole lot there. Definitely research it, um, but it's not that critical for this particular scenario. It, but in order to have unencrypted data, On the Palo Alto, I need three different things. First off, I need to set up and create a CA on the Palo Alto, a certificate authority to replace DigiCert. Second step I need to do is I need to trust that CA. So once I create the CA on the Palo Alto, I need to somehow configure my server to trust the Palo Alto. And then the third one is I need to configure a decryption policy. Once all that's done, the Palo Alto will decrypt all my data for me while it's going between me and Facebook or me and any other site that I might want. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So I'm gonna start off by creating the certificate authorities. Uh, I only need one, but the Palo Alto actually needs me to make two, so we'll go with there. Uh, so to create the certificate authorities, I'm going to click on device. And then on the left hand side, if we scroll on down, we can see a grouping here called certificate management and inside of that certificates. 
Down at the bottom, I'm going to click Generate. Now, if you have a corporate CA already in your environment, you can use that. I'm, I, I don't, so I'm going to have the Palo Alto hold it all for me. For the certificate name, I'll just call this um, Trusted CA. And then the common name, I will use the IP address of the internal interface of my firewall. Um, again, the common name, it needs to be either an IP address or the DNS name that the traffic is coming from. That's another certificate authority uh, uh, SSL issue. Research that if you're not familiar with it. And then once I specify that this itself is a trusted or is a certificate authority, so he can then create other certificates later down the road. I'm gonna say okay or generate. And then I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna generate a another one. I'm gonna call this untrusted CA with a common name of untrust. That doesn't actually exist to a to a DNS name, and that's perfectly fine and click certificate authority and generate all right so i've gener i've generated the certs i still need to configure a little bit more of them i'm going to click on my trusted ca and say this is the forward trust and okay and then i'm going to click on the untrusted ca and say that this is the forward untrust certificate and okay so I've just created the CAs. Now they can go ahead and they can create additional certificates as necessary. The second step is to trust this certificate authority, specifically the trusted certificate authority. I called it trusted. I haven't yet trusted it. So in order to trust that, I need to export it off the Palo Alto. So I'll go ahead and click the export button down here at the bottom. Uh, I don't need the private key. So I'll just go ahead and say, okay. And yes, I want to keep that. And then to import it, I'm going to go ahead and open it. Open. And click the install certificate. Uh, where do I want to put it? I want to put this on the local machine. Uh, if there's more than one user, that way it applies to all those users on the machine. Next. And then where do I want to put it? Well, I want to put this in the trusted certificate authorities. I want to be able to specify this is a trusted CA, trust everything that it creates. And okay, and next, and finish. Okay, so we created the CAs. I then imported and trusted the CA. Um, there are ways you could do that with group policy if you have an Active Directory domain or other scripting options. Lots of ways to do it uh, in larger organizations. Now that I have trusted that certificate authority, I now need to create a decryption policy in order to use it. That's under policies, and then on the left-hand side, we have decryption. There's no existing policy, so I'm going to go ahead and say add, and this is very similar to the uh, security or NAT policies. We'll give this a name. Let's see, decrypt policy. The source is going to be the internal zone. The destination is going to be the external zone. No services or URLs. And then under options, I want to decrypt it utilizing the forward proxy. All right, we say OK. And then finally, we commit. So there were a lot of steps there, and this is definitely not something that this video is going to cover all the possible options that you might need in a business organization, but hopefully it's enough to get you a test lab up and running that you can then play with and config or adjust for your business needs. All right, so at this point, I'm going to open up my Internet Explorer again, and I'm going to go back to Facebook.com. From the end user's point of view, everything looks exactly the same. We still have HTTPS, we still have the lock icon, um, but this is where things start showing up a little bit more interesting. If I click on the lock icon and view certificate, I can now see that the certificate was not signed by Digicert. In fact, it was signed by 192.168.1.1. It was signed by the Palo Alto. 
So when the traffic came into the Palo Alto, it was decrypted on the Palo Alto. It was then re-encrypted and re-signed by the Palo Alto and then forwarded it on to the end user. This way, if somebody was sending malicious data such as viruses or malware, or they were exfiltrating data such as social security numbers or credit card numbers, uh, we could then inspect the traffic even though it's encrypted. We can inspect the traffic coming or going into the environment and uh, manipulate or manage the traffic policies accordingly.